Good evening and welcome to the 7 o'clock news here on CNC3. I'm Charlene Ramdani. Good evening. Glad you can join us. I'm Samson Nanton. Good evening. I'm Roger Sand. In the headlines tonight, the Chief Justice says there was no discussion on partial proclamation of Administration of Justice Act. The AG concedes it's true. A case of tit for tat, the UNC lobbies citizens to march against the opposition leader hours before his planned march against the government. Catastrophe at the UTT South Campus. A freak storm leaves a $10 million trail of damage. Growing concern about the rising incidence of divorces in the local courts. We have the numbers later. And in sport, the Windies defeat Afghanistan in a World T20 warm-up match. Top of our news tonight. Chief Justice Ivor Archie says the judiciary never discussed a partial implementation of the Administration of Justice and Indictable Offences Act and says there must be patience in the way it is implemented or face possible chaos. As he addressed the opening of the new law to him, the Chief Justice made a strong call for more independence to the judiciary in the management of its funds and staff, a situation he says that is severely hampering progress. Samson Anton reports. For an hour and 15 minutes, he had all airs, including those of Prime Minister Kamal Prasad Bisesa and Attorney General Anand Ramlogan. In the midst of the Section 34 controversy, would the Chief Justice give his side? He did, saying there was no understanding by the judiciary of a partial implementation of the bill. It's always been our position, and we so advised, that implementation could not realistically take place before the first quarter of 2030. And we in the judiciary never discussed or contemplated partial implementation. He stressed the need for measures to reduce the high backlog of criminal cases in the system and welcomes the legislation. But he says the judiciary will not rush to implement it for fear of causing more chaos. We will start when we are ready. We must resist any temptation to make a premature start in the eagerness to demonstrate performance. All the ducks must be lined up or chaos will ensue right after startup and we will simply create a fresh and intractable backlog. But he voiced frustration with the number of criminal cases to be dealt with. He promises new rules to address criminal matters within weeks, rules that could help some cases to be settled even without oral proceedings. Many of the applications now being given lengthy hearings can, in my view, be dealt with in a more summary manner, even on paper rather than by extensive oral submission. This will require the introduction of criminal procedural rules and a change in the litigation culture. I expect to circulate draft criminal procedure rules for comment before the end of this month. But there is a major bugbear to the administration of justice, he says. Little control of staff resources. Many have left, he says, and many others may leave as well because of the salary structure offered by the CPO and the need to have cabinet's approval to hire some contract workers. It is critical that the judiciary exercise more control over its critical resource, its people. I raise the flag now because at the end of the day, I am accountable to the people of Trinidad and Tobago for the performance of the judiciary. And it's difficult to take responsibility for outcomes when one does not control the inputs. We must fix it before things fall apart. And the Chief Justice also wants the Salary Review Commission to consider adjusting salaries at specific intervals as he laments the long wait in the process of negating the effects of inflation on salaries existing for several years. Attorney General Anand Ramlogan says that while he agrees with the CJ that the abolition of the preliminary inquiries should be done in a measured way, the country cannot wait too long for the implementation. He was responding to the Chief Justice's statement at the opening of the new law to him. Again, Samson Anton reports. Attorney General Adam Ramlogan says he's not surprised by the revelation of the Chief Justice that the judiciary was never told the Administration of Justice and Indictable Offences Act would be implemented partially. I did not um, hear prior to that that the judiciary or the DPP for that matter say that they expected prior proclamation. Um, this matter has been fully ventilated. Um, I've said it was a parliamentary oversight. It certainly was not within the contemplation of the parliament at the time. Um, and if it was... I think the ramifications and implications 
and certainly the unintended consequences have now um, led to that matter being put to rest. He says while he agrees with the Chief Justice that the implementation should not be rushed, he's warning that unless there is a concerted effort to move forward, the country may have a long wait. The abolition of preliminary inquiries has been discussed now for the last 15 years. So whilst I endorse what the Chief Justice has said, that we need to have a measured, organized approach to the abolition of preliminary inquiries, I also wish to say that if we are not careful, we'll be talking about it for the next 15 years as well. But he says a call by the Chief Justice for greater control over its resources is something for consideration. The relationship between the service commissions and the departments that they service will need to be reviewed. It may very well be, as the Honorable Chief Justice has said, that the time has come to take a critical examination and analysis of how the service commissions and the employment process for the public service has served the various um, agencies. The AG says that call is not new and that there's been much debate on it in the past. President George Maxwell Richards is today taking issue with the legal systems currently operating in this country. President Richards expressed his concerns as he addressed an interfaith service which marked the opening of the 2012-2013 law term. He also appealed for the financial independence of the judiciary. Carmen Vin Tikasing and reporter Chester Sombrano were at the service and they filed this report. <laughs> Draped in their long flowing gowns, members of the judiciary made their way into the Trinity Cathedral in Port of Spain on Monday morning, followed by several high-ranking officials, including the opposition leader, attorney general, national security minister, and the chief secretary of the Tobago House of Assembly, Orville London. Chief Justice Ivor Archie and President George Maxwell Richards arrived soon after, and the proceedings got on the way without Prime Minister Kamala Posad Bissessa, who arrived 10 minutes later. Several representatives of various religious organizations took turns bestowing their blessings on the service. Delivering the keynote address, President George Maxwell Richards did not mince words as he spoke, without saying it, about the recent controversy involving Section 34 of the Administration of Justice Act. It seems to me that the difference between making law and executing or application of the law is not clearly understood by all concerned. President Richards stressed the importance of an independent judiciary, recounting that there have been times when the judiciary has had to sound the alarm to ensure that the demarcations insulating itself from other arms of governance remain intact. As many others have done before, he made an appeal for its financial independence. In this context, one of the considerations that deserve priority is the financial independence of the judiciary. Then it was time to exit the church. Officials made their way up Abercrombie Street onto Knox Street where they were met by a guard of honor created by the defense force. Chief Justice Ivor Archie would receive the salute, followed by an inspection of the troops, before making his way into the Hall of Justice to give his address. I am Chester Sambrano, reporting for CNC3 News. And that's the story which takes us to the Your Vote question tonight. The question we're asking you to vote on is, should government explain why there was no consultation with the legal fraternity on the proclamation of Section 34 of the Administration of Justice Act? Text your response to the number 2623. If your response is yes, you're texting the letter Y, and if it's no, the letter N. We'll give you an update on the voting as we go along in tonight's newscast and the final results at the very end. Mixed reaction from trade unions regarding their attendance of tomorrow's march against injustice planned by opposition leader Dr. Keith Rowley. Some union leaders who spoke with CNC3 News say while they are in favor of the march, Dr. Rowley had no prior discussion with them on the matter. Chester Sembrano reports. Whether you are in a church, in a union, in a all force club, wherever you are, if this matter sticks in your craw like it sticks in my craw, See you there. 
and come Tuesday, they will know it's a 10-day wonder. It was on Sunday that opposition leader Dr. Keith Rowley made a public appeal to churches, unions and non-governmental organizations to join in a mass protest to the president's house on Tuesday. He argues that the action has become necessary due to recent developments which led to the repeal of Section 34 of the Administration of Justice Act 2011. But Dr. Rowley may not be getting all the support he expects. Contacted by CNC3 News, President of the Banking Insurance and General Workers Union, Vincent Cabrera said, while he supports the protest, he is still uncertain whether the Joint Trade Union movement will attend because of the short time frame to mobilize. Mr. Cabrera believes the opposition leader should have held talks with the union leaders before going public with his plans. And similar sentiments are being expressed by the Federation of Independent Trade Unions and NGOs. Fight and President Joseph Remy tells CNC3 News that there was no consultation with the trade union umbrella body and therefore they would not be taking part. Mr. Remy told us that Fight and is assessing the issues surrounding Section 34 and would be making a statement on the matter soon. The National Trade Union Center is also expressing concern about the controversial section but wants to remain free from any political affiliations and therefore, as a federation, it has decided not to take part in the march. I am Chester Sambrano, reporting for CNC3 News. Strong condemnation tonight from one of the parties in government, the United National Congress, against the call by opposition leader Dr. Keith Rowley for citizens to march against the government and to sign a petition demanding the removal of the Prime Minister and the Attorney General from office. Instead, the UNC's international relations officer, Shane Mohammed, is now calling on citizens to stand up against Dr. Rowley and march against the injustice which the country suffered under PNM rule. The UNC he describes Dr. Rowley as an irresponsible leader of the opposition who believes that his way to the prime ministership is to coerce the population into social unrest. The UNC insists that since it came into office in May 2010, the government has given citizens a sense of security in matters of the state and every sector from housing to roads have been improved. In addition, the party says the national security minister has had the fortitude to go into Laventil and listen and treat with residents. The UNC says people must not be fooled by Dr. Rowley's call to wear red, white and black to march, insisting it is nothing more than a facade. It is urging people to remain focused and denounce any attempt or any way to destabilize the country. Well, we now move across to Roger Sand. He's here in studio to tell us what we can expect coming up in our sportscast a bit later on. Roger. Thank you very much, Charlene. Well, the World Cup, or T20 World Cup starts tomorrow. The Windies don't go into action until Saturday, but they had a warm-up match today. We'll bring you those scores, some highlights of India, Pakistan, and lots of events planned for Republic Day. Stay tuned. You'll find out all the details later in sport. Charlene and Samson, back to you. Thank you very much, Roger. You whet our appetites there for the sports cast. But let's move right across now to Samson. He's here to bring you some more news. Samson. Thank you so much, Charlene. Before we go on, though, the question you're voting on once again tonight, we want to find out from you, should government explain why there was no consultation with the legal fraternity on the proclamation of Section 34 of the Administration of Justice Act? Text your response to the number 2623. If you want to vote yes, text Y. If you want to vote no, text 10. We'll give you an update as we go along. And of course, the final result comes up at the end of tonight's news. But just ahead on the CNC3 news, millions of dollars in damage at the UTT South Campus after Sunday's freak storm. A huge portion of a major roadway in South Trinidad collapses. Teachers back on the job, but their union warns industrial action is far from over. And later, 4,000 and counting divorces on the rise in Trinidad and Tobago. These stories and more when we come back.